So hi again, uh, this is Billy, and uh, we're going to go over um, SDK, just in case you missed that in class. So um, first, you need to get SDK from the website, um, from AGI. You go to www.agi.com, and then uh, you can go to products, and just download the SDK here. You need to uh, sign for an account or log in as a guest to download that. So after you download and install the software, uh, you want to get uh, me your license. So you go to License Manager, right here, click that, and um, the SDK License Manager will come up. So see here we have the uh, License Manager. You want to copy me your host ID and also your registration ID. Um, but when you select your host ID, make sure you give me the one you use the most often. For example, I use uh, Wi-Fi the most, so I used to get, I would use this uh, wireless network host ID and registration ID. So send it to me, and I'll request a license for you. All right. So after that, uh, you have SDK set up, and we're gonna create a new scenario. So today, I'm just gonna show you the basics of uh, how to use the. Uh, calculate X access point and also the astrogator and generate a report. So first we want to create a new scenario and right now you see how we don't have this box here to select what your central body is. Um, so basically you have to go in here um, wait till we configure. So on default it's meant for Earth. Um, you have to go to view and check this planetary options. This will uh, let you select the uh, central bodies when you create a new scenario. So you can see here with all those central bodies. And as you can see here, I have all those like different planets and moon. Um, by default, the STK don't have all the files for the moons. Uh, so if you want uh, that, you have to download that um, from STK. Uh, there's a package called uh, STK Planetary Data Supplement. Uh, it's on the email I sent out earlier. So you want to click on that link and download that and install that. All right. Um, so for now, we're just going to do Earth. Okay. Okay. So this is the SDK main window. Um, we're going to close the timeline for now because it's in the way. And uh, go Windows and tile vertically. This will give us a more space to work with. All right. So first, let's try to um, add locations on uh, of interest on Earth. So you do insert new, and then you can add either a place or a target. Uh, we'll add a target for now, and you can search by address or define your own longitude latitude. So we'll add a couple of cities for now. Um, so why don't we pick one Bethlehem, PA, uh, spell, okay. So we can add that in. So here we have Bethlehem PA right here. Um, we can add a nice like maybe Houston, Texas. All right, uh, somewhere on the west coast, um, Seattle. And how about somewhere in the middle? Uh, okay, here it is. All right, and one more, Denver. All right, so we have um, a bunch of targets set up. Um, in the United States. Um, okay, so let's say that we want to set up a satellite uh, that is imaging those places, like maybe monitoring the condition of the city. I don't know. In the textbook, you see that there's a fire set example, right? You want to monitor the forest and, and the virus location on the United States. Well, this is something similar. We set up targets that we want to monitor. Um, so we're going to insert a satellite. And we could use the orbital wizard because it's easier. So insert here. 
Um, so you can also actually insert the satellite by looking up um, like you know GPS constellation or like existing satellites in the database. Uh, this would be useful if you want to add a bunch of satellite and see which one have real of a target, um, like in case of a crisis or something like that. Uh, but we will not do that for now. Um, we'll stick with adding our own satellite. So let's call this image set. Um, so here you can define the type of orbit we're in. So right now we're in a circular orbit, right? Uh, you could also define your own property series. So see, with a circular orbit, we have a inclination. Um, basically, that define how, like how inclined, um, what inclination plane your your satellite is with respect to the equator. Okay. Um, and then we also have the altitude, which mean basically is the distance away from Earth surface. Um, and then you have your RAAN, you know, right here, right angle of the sensor node, I think. Okay, if you go to the orbits designer, you have all your, um, you know, your six capillarian elements that you could uh, define, and you can play around with that and get a certain um, orbit you want. So eccentricity, remember, zero is circular, and then you know, um, anything more than one is a. Uh, Hyperbolic trajectory, um, inclination, argument, perigee, you know. So you can just play around with that. So right now we're just going to use a circular orbit. Um, we're going to have it on the angle a little bit so we can actually, you know, get a view of the United States. And we're going to go there, put this a little bit farther out. All right, apply. Okay. So right now we have a orbit around Earth. Here, so since you want to take pictures of the uh, our targets here, uh, what we want to do is we want to insert a new object. There, oh, it's here. Um, you want to add a sensor, so we can insert default, and it will ask you which uh, object you want to attach the sensor to. So we're going to attach that to our image slide. All right. Um, so you can see now they generate this cone. Basically, this cone is telling you, um, like the part of the planet that you have in, you have view of. So you define the uh, different sensor properties. Uh, we're gonna rename this as camera. So you see here, um, you can define uh, the sensor like uh, the angle, like how much you have in view. So 45 degree, you can see like basically half of the Earth, and then. You can have like a 30 degree. Um, you, know, you see how this cone lesson. So you see we're really far away right now. So that's why we can see like the entire um, like plane right here. But so let's say that we go closer to Earth um, by making this smaller. Let's say we want to make this like 10,000. See how we're closer to Earth now, and our view is limited to only this area within this circle. So um, click OK. You can click the play button right here. So this is your animation button. This reset the time back to the beginning of the uh, simulation, and this play forward, this play backward, this pause, this increase and decrease the time step. So you click play. It will simulate um, the satellite going around Earth, and you can see which part of Earth is passing by. As you can see here, our satellite here can get view of the United States and also uh, China um, and the various places. But of course, it can't get like uh, view at all time. So we want to know at what time we can get view of our targets. So to do that, what we do is we use the um, access function here. You click camera, access, and then you want to select all of them to see um, when you have a review of all these um, targets. So you click compute, all right, and then you can get um, generate an access report. So pretty much what this tell you is that um, for each location, for example, camera to Bethlehem, camera to Denver, it tell you um, how like within that 
simulation interval we define in the when we create the files, okay? It define it tell you how many times we have access to that location with that camera. Uh, so this is the start time, this is the end time, and this is the duration, how long that location is in view of our camera. Um, so you have that. We also have something called AER report. So that gives you the azimuth uh, elevation and also the range um, of like you know basically define where the angle is and how far away you're with that target. So we have a graph, access graph. So this tell you um, in different time like at different times when do we have view of those um, targets right here. So this is like the start, this is like the end, okay? So we can also add this to our timeline. Uh, so let's get our timeline back uh, right here. And you can click Add Time comp uh, Component. So you can highlight all that. This is the access data we compute earlier. And then, um, Select access access interval and click OK, and you will see in the timeline it will show you um, when we have access to those locations. You see, right here we have access to Seattle, Denver, Las Vegas, Houston, but we don't have view of Bethlehem. And as we're going on, you see, we never have access of all location. All right, so we have that. Um, let's close this again. So let's say that um, right now we not, are not happy with our orbits because we only see like a couple of targets. We want to like maybe do a maneuver to get farther so we can have a um, better range. So let's open up the image set. We're going to switch to Astrogator right here. Okay. Um, so I don't think we need this local map anymore. Okay. So uh, this is Astrogator. First, you see that how our um, orbit disappeared. That's because um, when you switch to Astrogator, you actually have to propagate. Or basically, what it does is it calculate uh, where your trajectory, your orbit is. So our initial state is defined um, here with Earth as an inertial coordinate system. So it's important that when you use uh, another um, central body, you have to redefine your coordinate system, just redefine central body, and also you have to use a propagator that's not Earth. Uh, I'll show that in another video. So switch over to Keplerian um, mode. So we have our semi-major axis, eccentricity, uh, you know, right ascension of the central node all that, uh, your capillary element. So let's uh, propagate that. Uh, our propagator right now is set to Earth, you can see here. So we have a couple different propagators here. We have a cislunar, this is, if you want to get to the moon, you will use that. We have an Earth J2, uh, basically take, a, uh, take into account the perturbation effect. Um, and then we have like heliocentric, which is for planetary travel. So I have a Mars J2 here. Uh, so if we, I just created that myself. Um, if you want to propagate in other planets, um, you have to create your own propagator. Uh, again, that will be shown in another video. Um, wait, go back to Earth. Okay. So right now we set up the propagator to um, this small. Also, like we, we tell it to propagate until it meets the stop condition. The stop condition is a duration of. Um, this much time, okay? So we run this right now. We'll see that it's um, sort of um, orbiting around Earth. Okay, you see that here, uh, We in our um, animation earlier, you know how our orbit is pretty much one line? Right here, you can see that every time when, uh, every time when the satellite goes around Earth, the orbit change a little bit. This is because of the perturbation effects, how there's more gravity in the like in the crater than the pole. So that's why the orbit is like changing and that's more realistic. So okay. Let's uh do an orbital maneuver. So if you remember from our last um video, 
uh, if we want to do a, a maneuver, we want to do it at uh, one of those uh, one of the nodes, either the perigee or the apogee. Uh, since we're in a circular orbit, it does not matter where that is. So I'm just going to um, do it at the ascending nodes. So you click new, stopping condition. You can pick uh, ascending node right here. And we're going to delete this one. So ascending node of Earth, right? And we want to repeat this maybe two times. So basically go over that two times and then stop there. All right. Um, I guess that don't really demonstrate too well. Um, well, we do one time. Uh, okay. Let's see. All right, so right there. Okay, so we're gonna add a maneuver here. So you click the new button, add a maneuver. So um, when we want to raise uh, our orbit, we want to thrust prorate, right? A long velocity vector. So we will give it a delta V magnitude. Um, so right now we just do one. Um, we're gonna use an impulsive burn. So using a constant thrust and ISP engine. So um, the difference between impulsive burn and finite burn is that you know, impulsive purpose is like a simpler way to simulate. It's saying that when we get here, we're going to do a delta V maneuver like at an instant, like at an impulse. And in real life, that's not possible. Uh, in real life, it's like a finite burn where it burn for a duration of time, right? Uh, that's why we also have another propagator here. But for um, for now, we're just going to use the impulsive burn because it's easier to use. Uh, and also, notice how we have a different engine models here. You have a constant thrust and ISP ion propulsion engine. We can define all the properties uh, in uh, the component browser here. Basically, you go to the engine models, double click this. You can tell, uh, set how much ISP you want the engine to be, how much thrust, and you can calculate how much fuel is used and all that. And you can see in the initial state, we can define our drag parameters and mass and all that, how big our fuel tank is and you know, a number of other stuff. Anyway, we're going to do a pull grade burn for now. Uh, let's make this yellow, different color. And again, after we burn, we're not going to see anything unless we propagate again. So we're going to propagate until we reach the apogee, the highest point of the orbit. All right, so let's run that. As you can see here, um, so we go back in our simulation, we play this, it go orbits until we reach our sending nodes and then I do a burn and then now we're in a different orbit, right? Okay. So now let's say that we want to make this a circular orbit. Um, you know, normally what we would do, um, just like in the home and transfer, right? We would do a prograde burn here to raise our per perigee. Up, so we have a circle of it. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a maneuver. Uh, let's make this a different color, red, and that will be a long velocity vector again, right? Uh, so I don't know what that number is. So let's guess like one, okay? And we're going to add a propagate uh, again afterward. So we're gonna make that a different color. And let's make it stop at the perigee right here. Alright, so let's burn. And you see here we are pretty close to having a circular orbit. Um so let's play this over again. So we're in a parking orbit, and then we do a burn to transfer the outer orbit, we do an eye burn to raise our perigee, and now we're in like a big orbit like this, right? All right. Uh, as you can see here, we're not really uh, in a circular orbit. We could double check that uh, by clicking result, and then uh, Kepler element, eccentricity. So we add this here, central by the Earth. 
So when we click this summary button, it basically tells us what happened after. Oh, we have to run this again. Okay. So you click summary. It tells us what we did here. So we did like a delta v burn, um, all that good stuff. And then in the end, it gives us the result we selected. So our eccentricity is 0 0.04. So it's close to a circular orbit, but it's not really a circular orbit. Um, I mean, we could, you know, pull out our calculator and calculate a number, but since we have a computer, why would we do that? Uh, so once right here, we're gonna use the targeter. Basically, the targeter is what it does. It it um, calculates the number for you. It iterates until uh, your condition is met. So we have a targeting sequence. Um, so in maneuver here, let's check this button. Basically, this is telling STK on the target uh, target sequence that we want to use this property to um, achieve our end result. So remember how we selected our end result here, uh, essentially from the kept learn element. So we go back to target sequence here. We double click this. You can use your control parameter. The control parameter is the burn right right here. And notice how our initial value is the value we set it at. You have to be some, somewhat close for the answer to converge. If you're way off, it'll take forever, and you might not get a number to converge. Um, you also set like maximum uh, number of iteration here. And okay, so we have our constraint, which is our eccentricity. We decide zero. Our currently we're at 0.04, and this is our tolerance. So basically, the lower you set your tolerance, then you know. The more accurate you get, however, the less likely it's going to converge because maybe you know some sometimes some variables are not possible. Uh, we'll sh so we'll demonstrate that when we do our error breaking later. Uh, let's you know, set up tolerance really low since we are pretty close already. Should be able to handle this. Um, action: select run active profile. So active profile pretty much tell it target uh, the SDK that to use the targeter. If you use nominal sequence, it just run whatever the number is here. So we run this. Okay. So you see that uh, in three iteration, it uh, achieved a number that's pretty close to what we want here. All right. So e to the negative seven, and we got orbits here. So now you click apply and you can select back to nominal sequence. You can see that our burn is actually 0.86 instead of 1 km per second. Um, Alright, so we have a circle open here. So let's calculate our, oh, let's actually propagate this um, maybe like five times around Earth. Alright, and then let's uh, recalculate our access. I like that. Compute. Let's see our graph interval. You can see that our uh, time of access is a lot longer than before. Before, you know how remember how it was like small like this, and now we yeah, have like a longer duration because we're farther away. All right. Um, let's see. So we know how to use the target there, maneuver, and burn. Uh, let's play this then. Let's say we want to like uh, get to the time. You know, right now we can play all we want. Uh, we might not find. Okay, right now it cross all of them, right? But let's say we want to set it to a time where it cross all of them, uh, but we don't want to play the animation. What we could do is we could um, go back to our um, access report here. So. Um, Let's say Bethlehem for now, okay. Oh, by the way, if you want to like um, quickly access this report, you can add this to the uh, quick report slot, and uh, it should show up somewhere around here. See, okay. Um, so we have in our simulation time, we have three access, and let's select the longest one, longest duration, max duration is this time right here. So highlight that, right click, and then um, use the start time set as uh, animation time right here. 
and you see we'll be set to the point where it have access to uh, Bethlehem when it started.